Dr. Sarah Wofford. I'm in the biology department in the School of Science. Um, unfortunately, Dr. Polly Jordan couldn't join us this morning, um, so I'll be introducing um, her work that she helped Cecilia Davis with, which is some really cool stuff studying the effects of urbanization on scale biodiversity in the spring. Thank you, Dr. Wofford. Good morning, y'all. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you today about the impact of urban snail diversity in the Cahaga River Basin. So, the state of Alabama contains the highest numbers of freshwater snail diversity in all of North America. And this figure up here will show you, it's really small, but um, it shows the numbers of snail species within each state. And Alabama contains at least double the number of the surrounding states, um, and it's greater than any of the other uh, surrounding North American uh, not countries, but areas. <laughs> so, freshwater, or, excuse me, uh, Alabama is also a global epicenter for freshwater periwinkles. Um, freshwater periwinkles are pleurocerid snails with spiral-like shells. Um, here is a photo capture of them right here. They are the little raisin-looking uh, figures on the rock. <laughs> so, these snails require clean, flowing, uh, permanent streams in order to live. However, urbanization, which is characterized by the increase in pollution and um, con dam construction, um, has led to uh, excuse me, I lost my place. Has led to the extinction of 36 snail species uh, and even more numbers of imperiled and endangered snails just within the state of Alabama alone. So, urban land cover. Um, it causes stream, <clears throat> excuse me, stream degradation and the change in morphology and stream chemistry uh, caused by land use is uh, known as the urban stream syndrome. So it's very important to understand the relationship between urban cover and fauna diversity. And in this case, I wanted to address the question of the relationship between urban cover development and its impact on periwinkle snails in the Cahaba River Basin. So the Cahaba River Basin lies in Birmingham, um, which is a major urban center in Alabama. So snails here might be at risk of extinction due to habitat loss. So um, in order to do so, I did a survey of 46 small order streams in the Cahaba River. Uh, this graph here shows the range of the uh, streams that I surveyed. The streams were scouted via Google Maps based on accessibility and basin size. So accessibility being I found the coordinates of the stream, looked it up on Google Maps, and carried the little street view guy over, took a look around to see if there were no fences or if the ditches weren't too deep to make sure I could actually access the stream. Um, basin size was kept under 32 kilometers square, um, thus uh, most streams, or all streams were smaller. Um, delineations of each stream were performed on USGS StreamStats online tool. Um, so I was able to find from this stream size and urban cover percentages. And StreamStats is a really cool online program. It utilizes data from geographic information systems, um, and it will you can input coordinates or you can put, uh, actual, actually select a spot on a stream, and it will give you information such as the uh, basin size. Um, urban cover percentages. It will also provide <clears throat> the watershed area, so the barrier, barrier in which that point uh, contributes to the watershed. Um, so it was a really cool uh, tool that I was able to use. Um, here's a logo from them. <laughs> so streams were then physically surveyed for the presence or absence of periwinkle snails. So again, um, if you look here, you'll see a lot of them present. So typically, if there were snails present, they were everywhere. You would crunch on them as you walked through the stream. But if they were if they were absent, then they were completely absent throughout the stream. So surveying was fairly easy. I would go in, uh, walk around the stream, and basically see if they were present or absent uh, within a couple minutes. So again, looking back at this map, um, all these markers show the range in which uh, I surveyed stream sites. Uh, zooming out right here on this smaller map, shows where the Cahaba River Basin lies. It will be this basin area that falls within the greater Mobile River Basin. So this star right here being Birmingham. Uh, Birmingham on the map is just right here. And um, if you will see all of the blue markers, 
will be those in which I did not find snails, and then the red markers were stream sites in which I actually did find snails. So um, all of the streams were small order. They ranged in size from 0 0.02 kilometers to 31.6 kilometers square. The urban cover percentages uh, ranged from 1.35% to as high as 90%. Um, and on only six out of those 46 streams of our, I was able to find the presence of snails in. So this just kind of shows some of the streams were within each other, so it's possible they contributed to, they were able to, they were connected, so snails traveled probably from those streams. <clears throat> this graph right here shows the relationship between percent cover and stream size. There was really no relationship. I just kind of wanted to show along the graph. Um, you can see the trend line is pretty much flat. I just kind of wanted to show the stars are where the presence of snails were found. Um, and that kind of range, we have up here at 80%, um, and it kind of ranges all throughout the map. So there was really no relationship between that. Um, and that wasn't really what we expected to find. So we wanted to see, you know, what we wanted to see, but science will throw a curveball at you. So there were three possibilities that this could have occurred. Um, so number one, the snails might have, even though these snails are historically found in the Cobb River Basin, the snails might have never been present in these small order streams. Um, this could be because there was no connectivity uh, from the main stem to the small order stream. Um, another possibility, these streams are no longer permanent. Um, so <coughs> They require permanent flowing streams. Um, however, these streams could be intermittent. They could be running dry throughout the season. Um, and that way, the snails are not able to persist. Um, and then the third uh, possibility, there was a change in water chemistry. So snails require calcium carbonate in order to build their shells. Um, so if there's no calcium carbonate in the water, the snails will not be able to thrive there. They would not be able to build their houses. <clears throat> So future research on the topic could include comparing two similar uh, streams in size and morphology, uh, one with snails and one without, um, and then checking the water chemistry and morphology of the stream <coughs> to see how urban cover affects um, the morphology, how urban cover on morphology, how urban cover affects snail community. Sorry, I was just throwing all those words out there. <laughs> So down here, I have two pictures. Um, on the left is a healthy rural stream. You can see it's flowing, it's pretty. Um, there's plenty of riparian vegetation in order, to uh, in order to catch the runoff and substances from getting into the stream. And on the right, there's an urban stream. You can see there's a building in the background, a bridge just over it, and there's actually not really much of stream. It's all rock. Um, this could be because they the city or whoever put these rocks on the side to try to catch substances and they just fell right in. So these were, uh, this was a stream in which snails were present, uh, but this is one within the city of urban camp that was, I don't believe we talked about that one. So, um, and that pretty much concludes the survey that I did on snail community. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, so just hours. How many hours? Did you have to spend to do this? Because I mean, that's a lot of dots on the map. So, actually, what took me the most time uh, was finding those streams in the first place. So, going on Google Maps. Um, so, I switched between Google Maps and USGS streams, uh, stream stats because I wanted to make sure the streams were the correct basin size. They were kept, they were small order, they were kept under 32 kilometers square. So, it was kind of a lot of uh, hours just waiting on the program to load finding out the basin size was a little bit too big, going back. So I probably clicked on like 200 different streams on <laughs> and then I found 46 in which we're at the correct basin size. So um, yeah. could, yeah. could you then ballpark, like how many hours did you spend sitting oh, in gosh. this versus how many hours you spent like driving and being there? Um, it's probably a three to one ratio. I probably spent, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> so more, more time. More time on the computer, computer yeah, yeah, than actually surveying. Because, yeah. like I said, when I, well, it took an, about an hour to drive to Birmingham, but when it actually took to survey, um, I just pretty much had to go in, look that there were no snails in one spot, because if they weren't in one spot, I would kind of walk along the street, but if they weren't in one spot, they weren't present in the street at all. Did you have a question, sir? Oh, oh sorry, hand up. Any more questions? Yes. So, um, you go further with your research. Do you plan to look on these snails and maybe look at other bases, like the larger bases, or like how do you kind of think you may want to go forward with this? Well, um, at first I was attempting, um, I think we would keep it to the Pleurocera snail species, 
Um, but I was attempting to check the water chemistry in uh, the streams in similar size. Um, I wasn't able to figure out exactly how to use the uh, mobile titration kit. I kind of just got errors in that. Um, but I think checking the calcium carbonate between each stream would be a good way to go forward with that. Streams and similar size. Okay, there are no other questions, but I thank our speaker.